Welcome to weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. The first one is a big one. The FA reauthorization bill has been released and well, it's quite a bit of information. A Percepto gets a non-site specific BV loss waiver. We have Skybrass coming up with new cool features. We played with them and it's pretty amazing. And then lastly, a new acting FA administrator. Let's get to it. All right, your first story this week is the FA reauthorization bill, which has a lot of information about drones in it. Um, as you might know, the FA needs to be reauthorized every so many years. Uh, 2023 is the year of the FA reauthorization. Uh, in the document, Congress highlights all the different goals that the FA has to fulfill within the next five years. So topics are, well, quite diverse. Uh, Jason and I, we sat down a couple of days ago once we got the, uh, the first draft and uh, spent about five hours reading every single line in there that had to do with drones and uh, trying to make sense of it in preparation for making a video for you guys. Now, we haven't had the video done yet because this is still a bill and it's not finalized, but the topics included uh, routine beyond visual line of sight flights, as you can imagine, uh, UAS airworthiness, which I thought was interesting, uh, quite a bit of information about agricultural flights and then uh, carrying hazardous material, which is kind of a big no-no at the moment or very difficult to achieve. Uh, an interesting part was a waiver simplification and expedited reviews of waivers. I think this is a good thing. Uh, we have critical infrastructure information. Uh, they're talking about wild land firefighting. Uh, this is something that uh, has been difficult to do for firefighters and should be easier with this um, reauthorization act. We have a risk assessment, uh, also a bit of information about recreational drone flying, a few tweaks in there. And uh, tethered drones for public safety is one of the topic, uh, operation of multiple UAS, and then finally, network remote ID. Uh, like I said, we're working on compiling all of this information into a single video, but the bill is not uh, law just yet. So we wanna make sure that we don't uh, provide information a little bit too early. But uh, if you'd like to read the bill, uh, make sure that you start at page 376. This is where uh, the UAS section starts, and then we'll leave a link down in the description. Your second story this week is that Percepto has gotten a waiver for BV loss, beyond visual line of sight. Now you're probably thinking, big deal, so have plenty of other people. That's right. But what makes this waiver special is that uh, there's no set location attached to the waiver. Uh, this means that Percepto is permitted to fly beyond visual line of sight anywhere the waiver, the waiver is going to allow, which is quite a big step forward, quite frankly. Uh, this waiver is another major step for the industry's goal to uh, get routine BV loss operation, and uh, we're pretty excited about this. All right, for your third story this week, we are talking about Skybrass. Our friends at Skybrass have released a new feature allowing to have any video from nearly any device to be loaded into Skybrass and processed to create a 3D model. And this may not sound like a big deal, but it really is. Uh, to test it, we downloaded a video from YouTube of a castle's ruins and we processed it in Skybrows. Now the entire process took about 10 minutes uh, from download to model. Uh, this is a really cool addition. Uh, pretty much any video from any device can be used at this stage. Uh, we also created a model of a Mavic 3 thermal using one of our studio cameras and using the uh, cyclorama wall right here that we have, that big white wall, and without any sort of GPS. And the results were very impressive. So uh, thanks to Jeff at Skybrows gave us access early and then for giving us the idea of taking a video from YouTube, he did that first. And and, uh, and then we copied it and then it worked really well. All right, your final story this week, we have a new acting FA administrator. Her name is Polly Trottenberg. Uh, she was the deputy secretary and now she became the FA administrator, or acting administrator after Billy Nolan stepped down. Uh, additionally, there is no nomination for the FA administrator uh, after the previous nominee stepped down. This was a few months ago. So uh, this is a bit concerning, quite frankly. I'm not sure what the holdup is. I'm not sure what we can find somebody qualified to finally head the agency. Uh, especially with this FAA Reauthorization Act right around the corner. Um, well, anyway, I'm just going to shake my head. All right, we'll keep you updated if we hear anything else on the FAA uh, for the new administrator, but uh, at this stage, we need a nominee. All right, that's it. That's all we have. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, like, subscribe. We'll see you next time. We have a live Q&A on Monday, so I hope to see you there and answer all your questions. See you guys. Beep. <laughs>